Where are you now? Where would you like to be? Let Center Holidays help you get there. Whether you want to travel by bicycle, boat, bus, car, plane, ship, train, or walkabout, Center Holidays is a nationwide full-service travel service. My last video, entitled Potbellied Porker, was based on an episode of a TV series that I had acted in. Also in the latter part of the last century, I acted in a TV miniseries. The Froom Room was a production of Rogers Television. I played the part of a TV news anchor. I hope you enjoy watching it as much as I enjoyed acting in it. Swiftly is on, Dash Swiftly is on the scene with an update. Yes, thank you, Rock. As you can see, the situation down here is rather nerve-wracking. It's no accident that this bomb threat coincides with the airing of the latest Froom Room episode. And it's no secret that Timmy Barbellini, the man believed to be responsible for this bomb threat, has reason to despise Froom Room host Dominic Froom. Now, despite the dangers of this bomb threat, Dominic Froom still plans on doing tonight's show from his apartment. As a matter of fact, there he is now. Mr. Froom, Mr. Froom. Room, please tell me, uh, is it worth risking your own life for the sake of tonight's show? I cannot let the 20 or possibly even 30,000 viewers of the Froom Room down. Bomb or no bomb, the show must go on. Mr. Froom. On behalf of the producers of The Froom Room, I cannot let you continue with this episode as you are. Due to our contractual agreement with the wardrobe sponsors and the lack of insurance, we cannot risk damage. So if you are indeed going to continue with the show, I will need the uh, shoes. The shoes? And the pants. The pants? You want the pants? And the uh, hair piece. Oh, no! What's mother gonna say? I cannot let the one or maybe even two viewers of the Froom Room down. Bomb or no bomb. The show must go on. This is unbelievable. Has television become more important than life itself? Reporting live from downtown Vancouver, this is Dash Swiftly. Back to you, Rock. Thank you, Dash Swiftly. As the drama unfolds, we will keep you all up to date. We now return you to regularly scheduled programming already in progress. Welcome to the show, friends. This is the Froom Room. I'm your host, Dominic Froom. On the program tonight, MPC president and a huge advocate to the legalization of marijuana, Mark Emery. Also on the show, CITR radio personality, Nardwar, the human serviette. And with just a little bit of luck, Eduardo, the pie-catching wonder of the world. And now, with a lot of luck, Maybe, just maybe, somebody can bring me a pair of pants. Size 32 ways. I beg you. Ah. We'll be back right after this. What is the craziest thing you'll do for a buck? Well, how about doing a back handspring in the middle of downtown Vancouver? All right, let's go. Lori Fung, eat your heart out. Okay. Ready? We're ready. Okay. Ready? What's the craziest thing you will do for a buck? I will do the human pretzel trick. The human pretzel trick, take it away.
right, welcome back to the show, folks. As I mentioned earlier on the pro... Man, I can't believe it. This is just ridiculous. It's deafening in here. I can't even hear myself think. Don't these people know I'm trying to do a television show? Listen, folks, I'll be back in just a second, okay? Just one second. What do you make of that, Charlie? Would you guys keep it down out there? I can't even hear myself think! Is that true? What's he saying out there? Oh my God, the bomber's got a gun to the head of one of the hostages. If I don't do the show, my sponsors are going to cancel their funding and beer endorsements. He's going to cut their throats. Someone's going back inside. This is getting out of control. We better send in the emergency response team. Maybe we can finally get some peace around here. Just ridiculous. Anyway, folks. At we interrupt tonight's regularly scheduled programming to bring you a live TFN News Update with Rock Gibraltar. This station has just been informed that Alistair Q. Fink, the apartment building manager, has been reported as one of the hostages. I am now being told that we have the terrorist on the phone. He says he has a message for all the public. Timmy Barbellini, are you there? Am I on? Yes, you are. Go ahead, Timmy. Okay, I just want to tell everyone that I'm doing this for all the little people that are being pushed around by the elitist dictators of this country, namely Dominic Broom. All right, Timmy. But tell us about your plans of destruction and, and mayhem. Uh, how long will you wait before you push the button? Oh, I don't have any plans. I just want some respect, man, some dignity. All right, Timmy, but isn't there a better way? In, instead of all the bloodshed, uh, the, the burning bodies being blasted into a pit of eternal torture, the, the souls being blown to millions of pieces? Hold on! All I want is just some somebody to feel sorry for me. Is that too much to ask for? Can't you hear the voices telling you to murder innocent people? You have to turn the volume down. If you turn the volume down, you won't hear the voices telling you to commit unspeakable crimes against humanity. We now return you to regularly scheduled programming already in progress. Gentlemen from CITR Radio, I give you Nardwar the Human Serviette. How are you today? How not are you bad, doing? not bad. How now you that doing? the earthquake is done, I think everything's it, set. It's good to be on the Froom Room show today. All right. And as I've said in past, I enjoy your show, yes. so I've brought a gift for you. I know you like race cars, but here's a little <laughs> towel here from the band The Sister Lovers. Let's have a look at this. The Sister Lovers are a great rock and roll band from Vancouver, Canada. Sister and they're Lovers. one of the many bands that get featured on radio stations like CITR, right. where I volunteer. Right. Also, it's fun to be able to talk to people. Like, I actually got a chance once to talk to them. Dan Quayle, and he didn't know who the Prime Minister of Canada was as well. I but see. now I'm here on the Froom Room in yes, Richmond, British Columbia, Canada. That's right. Home of Bill Va Wim van der Zam. The Stampeders. <laughs> oh, what a feeling. Yes, that's you, Mr. Froom. Yes, Hello, indeed. how are you doing? I'm doing pretty darn good. Now, please, uh, tell me the story. Last summer, there was a huge hoopla about you being kicked out of Lollapalooza, out of UBC. What was all that about? Well, I don't know. Um, I interviewed that guy, Beck, that culture-surfing Generation X type guy. Right. And, well, the Beck guy, Mr. Froome, he just <laughs> wasn't really down with the fun jokes. Like, right now, I could rub your genitalia, oh, no, and no, you no. wouldn't mind. <laughs> you wouldn't mind. <laughs> but the thing is, Beck did not get the rubbing genitalia type jokes, so mm. he basically told me to F off. Therefore, when I was at Lollapalooza, Beck was there, and he said, <laughs> get him, and then I was kicked out easily. No, I had the proper pass. Really? Yeah. So you were really bummed out after that? Because you I do? screwed up with Beck. I was screwed up with everything else. Also, a few years ago, also, I got to meet Sebastian Bach from the band Skid Row. Yeah. And he basically assaulted me as well. Assaulted so you? I'm, Tell me about I, this. I'm banned from interviews from Warner Music and banned from interviews from MCA Music as well. You no, know, basically, I was just asking him some questions about, you know, why heavy metal is failing these days. You know, like <laughs> bands like Warrant and Cinderella are totally gone downhill. And right. Cinderella's videos will not get played on MTV, but Green Day will. What's the problem? No more Cinderella. And 
And as a result, a bit of scuffle happened, and I was banned from interviews with Warner Recording Artists and MCA, and that's why Lollapalooza kind of was a failure. All right, now, Nardwar, I understand you brought for us a clip today. What is it? I brought a clip of some fun action, an example of some of the fun you can have when you join CITR, FM 102, Cable 102, Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. It's a radio station at the University of British Columbia, room 233 of the Student Union Building, 822-2487. You can join and become, well, you can do fun interviews like this. It's so exciting. Okay, but tell me This about is the Lydia Lunch. She's a performance artist from New York. She's done some stuff with Sonic Youth, and she's kind of a fun character that might actually be coming to Music West. All and right, all right. To her let's, uh, let's, let's roll the tape then. Let's have a look. What about this goth thing? Would you not say, Exine, that Lydia... I don't know, I, when I think your name, Lydia Lunch, aside from Lena Lovitch, I kind of think a bit of goth. And I think the Cramps got goth, too. I think a lot of New York bands got a goth following. What is goth? And does, have any goths been coming out to this rude hieroglyphics tour? I don't know. I don't care. Look, Nardo, goth has nothing to do with me. If you, it's like saying, you know, everyone with black hair looks like Susie and the Banshees. I mean, you got to get with it, dude. You know, your, categoriz your categorizing is just making no sense to me. You no, know, like, there's people coming out to gigs, and you go, oh, look, there's the goths, you know? Who gives a sh what they look like? It's what they think about that's important. I don't well, care. Look at you. I mean, if you came out to my gig and say, what is this, like, hockey fan doing at my fucking show? This guy, Nardo, what is this all about? I mean, this guy is like... I mean, he, Nardo had a human serviette, Lydia Lent. He is kind of a irritating as you said he would be but i mean you know what does it matter what people look like it's what they think or do well i must say that's that's very very interesting work uh do you like Lydia? Well, it kind of runs in my family. Believe it or not, this guy right here, I don't know if the camera can zoom in, this guy's Eric Nestorenko. He's my great, great cousin. He played in the NHL, and he, like, went up to players, and he said, if you beat me up, I'm going to beat you up over the top of the head with a stick. So that's my <laughs> uncle, Eric Nestorenko, right there. Your so uncle. So it's kind of fun, Eric Nestorenko. Yeah, I love to interview, I haven't even interviewed my great cousin or uncle. I haven't even interviewed him, but I'll interview anybody. So anybody watching there on the Shaw Cable, Rogers Cable Network type thing, yeah. my radio show's Fridays, 3324 on CITR 101.9 FM. That's 101.9 101.9 FM. FM. Come in for an interview or join a station and get your own show. Man, if I, the pathetic sod that I am, can do it, if I can earn my tongue, <laughs> run my tongue, run my tongue along this table, then hopefully yeah. you can too. If I can spit in my hands and rub it on the makeup, you can too. So please join CITR FM. Don't rub it. That's the band. It's just your love for some bacon. That's your gift. Are you going to keep it? I'm going to keep it. Thank you very we much. We have to take a break, folks. Uh, this is the firm room, though. This, this is, is the... I want to do that. That, that Italian Nord thing. Nardwar, the uh, human <laughs> serviette. The sister lovers check. They're, uh, they're hot. They're we have to band. take a break, folks. Uh, we'll be this back. This is the firm room. Enjoy right the after this. This is my uncle. Are you confused with the world around you? Is everything in your life slowly disintegrating? Have you lost all hope in mankind? Do you wake up in a cold sweat each morning wondering whether to have cornflakes or oatmeal for breakfast? Then we have the solution! Yes, it's the I Can't Believe You're Giving Away a Crappy T-Shirt Contest. But what would I do with a crappy T-Shirt, you ask? Well, you could tie it around your head and jump around like an idiot. Or use it to line your kitty litter box. Or you can bring it with you on your next UN mission to a country you've never heard of before. But there's only one way to get this marvelous product. Write or fax to us in 40 words or less what you would do with a t-shirt if you owned one. The best three will win the fabulous wearable absolutely free. And if you have any room left on the page, tell us what you think of the show. It's that simple. So why are you still sitting there? Grab a pen and start writing. Do you want me to come over there and... We interrupt tonight's regularly scheduled programming to bring you a live TFN News update with Rock Gibraltar. Uh, I'd like to start off by apologizing for my behavior. Uh, I forgot to take my medication this morning, 
Not, not to mention the stress of, of trying to conduct a new show in the middle of... Uh, <laughs> anyway, I, I assure you that uh, I have fully regained my faculties. Uh, now back to the situation at hand. Uh, we have uh, reporter Cash Swindle on location in downtown Vancouver with more on this uh, bomb threat. Uh, what's the situation like down there, uh, uh, Bash? We are just waiting for official word from the police regarding any casualties. However, there are unconfirmed reports that the coroner has been called in. Uh, is there any word on the condition of the hostage there, Crash? Well, Rock, I have just received word that there have been shots fired in the building. Now, this footage of Dominic Room pleading for help has heightened this crisis to a state of emergency. Now, God only knows what's going on in that apartment building up there. Uh, that's, that's amazing, Mash. It, it sounds like the, the police have more on their, uh, on their plates than they can eat. Uh, what's their next move, uh, Hash? Well, Rock, the only option left now is to send in the emergency response team, which they are sending in as I speak. Now, this situation should wrap up shortly, unless they start shooting themselves first. Okay, Stash, uh, keep us informed if anything happens down there. The name is Dash Rock. Who? Dash Swiftly. Forget it. Okay, that was Trash Swinkley uh, on location. Uh, stay tuned to this station for further updates. Until then, this is Rock Gibraltar on the Rock. We now return you to regularly scheduled programming already in progress. Okay, I think we've seen the replay tape enough already. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, a nice round of applause for Eduardo, the pie captain wonder of the world. Nice job, Eduardo. Oh, oh, what a nice. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And I must say, that was truly, truly remarkable stunt footage. Please stop the gun! Get out of here! No, 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 no! Hey, I didn't do anything! Stop! Up here, Captain! <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not the guy. Let's move it out, man. Go, go, go! Keep your hands up! Hey, anything you say, man! Anything you say! Oh, oh, unbelievable. And they didn't even have the decency to knock. Well, I guess there's only one thing left to do. That's if my heart's still working, and that's to bring out the final guest of the evening. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Hemp BC President, Mr. Mark Emery. Hello, Mark. How are you? Fine, thanks. How are you? All right, welcome to the show. Good to be here. Please have a seat and be careful. Nordwar was here earlier. Okay. Scary stuff. Okay. Now, before we get into the uh, the goods and the bads, the uh, the facts about the legalization of hemp, I just have to ask you, what is the silliest thing you've ever done stoned? Uh, you know, I don't know. Mostly getting stoned is my silly hour, so most of the times it would be pretty silly activity, but nothing particularly distinguished. I'm not thinking too seriously when I get high in the evening, so I think it's all pretty silly. I see. Now, I understand, too, your hemp store, Hemp BC in Vancouver, uh, was recently raided by the police. Now, aside from the, uh, the Twinkies, the uh, chocolate chip cookies, uh, the chocolate bars, and the Freak Brother comic books, <laughs> what exactly was confiscated? Well, 25 police officers and about 12 vehicles trashed our place, messed it all up, took $105,000 cost in inventory, and that's a lot of rolling papers and a lot of bongs, let me tell you, but mushroom kits and a whole bunch of other nifty stuff. But basically, our whole inventory less for less a few clothes they left behind. Okay, now this entire situation, it's blown over. This was like a month or so ago, two months ago. What has transpired since? Well, we've come back more defiantly. We've opened a marijuana grow store to help people actually grow the plants. We sell them books next door that show them how to grow the plants, and we provided seeds for them to Germany. And we even have a cafe plan where people can get high at each table and eat marijuana and hemp foods, all within the same block. Interesting. I understand you sell seeds at Hemp BC, too. That's correct. Yeah, Not seeds. as many as we used to. We have to be more discreet because that brought on the police raid from the United States. We think that they called our guys and they said, get this guy. Because mm -hmm. we had sold 100,000 seeds in a very short period of time, under a year. Yeah. Okay. Now, when people use marijuana as an intoxicant, uh, how do you react to the suggestion that this activity leads to more serious drug uses like uh, LSD, uh, crack cocaine, heroin, or, or dare I say, extra strength Tylenol? 
Well, maybe we should just... Look. I've never had any experience with those drugs, by the way. It's not... I think people tend to use the drugs in their social circles. So in my social circle, most people are 35 to 40 with teenage children, and we're all working, so we don't ever encounter this kind of thing. But if you're a young person, you have friends who would be doing dangerous drugs, and you're likely going to be influenced by your friends, not so much by the drugs you're surrounded by. I have no experience in that. All I know is that 2 million marijuana smokers and 5,000 heroin addicts show that there's still a large number of people who never approach hard drugs. I see. So you don't think there's really a direct correlation between pot use as an intoxicant and more serious drugs? No, serious drugs, legal or illegal, are always a result of pain and suffering that people at a young age or middle age or any age suffer and they turn to these kind of drugs to alleviate the pain they're feeling. Uh, people who don't have pain, you find, don't have drug problems. Uh, just one moment, Mark. Uh, I've got a phone call. This is ridiculous. We're trying to do a show here. Hello? Uh, Mr. Fink? No, listen, there isn't a bomb. No, look, listen, it's probably just a hoax. No, no, I haven't been watching the news. Look, Mr. Fink, look, I've got to go. I, I can't talk right now. Sorry about that, Mark. Uh, that's just the landlord of the building. Nothing to worry about. But uh, let's just move right along. Pretend that didn't happen. I apologize. I hope you're not embarrassed. I know I am. Um, if hemp was legalized, would it pose a threat to multinational corporations? Uh, I don't think so. Actually, I'm sure Mac Blow would be right in there planting hemp on their clear cuts. I'm sure Scott Tissue Paper would be putting hemp right in the toilet paper they manufacture. I mean, anything, I think companies will gain a lot in prestige and advertising by not using trees and, in fact, using hemp. In fact, the, the sad fact may be that after little guys like myself and a lot of others get hemp legalized, the mass multinationals will, in fact, be the biggest profiteers of hemp, once it's, which is still all right. I mean, that's as good an incentive for them as it is for me. Mm -hmm. And what are some of the more useful aspects of marijuana to, say, Canadian society? Well, first of all, it's $800 million industry in British Columbia alone. That's more than all other resource-based industries combined. And we could double and triple that, virtually wipe out unemployment in British Columbia, provide uh, a good living for everybody on social assistance. We could wipe out welfare, for that matter, by just getting everybody to grow more pot. You can make $30,000, $40,000 a year minimum by a simple room full of marijuana. That means anybody who's handicapped or has children or is simply unable to get a job in the other workforces. Right. Okay, we're just about out of time. Just they one can quick grow question, pot. though. Yeah, what, uh, what duties still remain, though, for your dream of legalized hemp to become a reality. What do you have to do, just quickly? Uh, just drag the rest of the country along, kicking and screaming, and then uh, hopefully the politicians will notice that the people have changed the way they feel about marijuana and its legalization. Terrific. Thank you, Mark Emery, for being on the show. Ladies and gentlemen, Glad Mark Emery, uh, president of Hemp BC. Uh, we have to take a break, though. Uh, we'll be back right after this. Is the craziest thing you'll do for a buck? I will do my 90s mating call. <laughs> what is the craziest thing you will do for a buck? Uh, my arm trick. Your arm trick? Yeah. Okay, take it away. Okay, watch that elbow very carefully. Ready? Oh my god. Oh, oh my god. Look at it. It's bent. <laughs> You know, you can't let the show or, or some crazed bomber get in the way of good personal hygiene. Anyway, I'd just like to take the time now to apologize for today's show. It's not usually this hectic and so, so full of endless interruptions. In fact, I, I don't even hear the commotion outside anymore. Ah, the bomb was, it was probably a hoax. There never was a bomb. <laughs> what? Oh, hello, Mr. Fink. Wow, you're looking really sharp. Shut up. Just shut up. Just shut up! When have you become Mr. Tough Guy hanging up on people, huh? You know, I've had just enough of you. All I ever wanted to do was to own my own building and to enjoy like early retirement and peace. But no, oh no. First it's your show, then it's the stupid bomb, then it's this freak nylon! Because <laughs> 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 it's bull with all the bits tomorrow, then you are out of here! You hear me? Dub! Oh, so, you finally.
finally decided to show your face. Are you crazy? Why are you doing all of this? Is it because you think... No, why are you doing this to me? Why did you tell him I was shooting hostages? I didn't do anything. Shooting? Hostages? What are you talking about? And, and who's them? The news guys, the guys out front. They showed you on the news yelling out the window saying I went nuts and started shooting. I was telling them to shut up. I'm trying to do a show up here. That's it. No shooting. No hostages. You mean they just made it up? You didn't tell them anything? Jimmy, I am sorry. But this was, it's just all gotten carried away. I didn't mean to hurt you. I was just trying to... Well, I'm sorry, dog. I just wanted some attention. I didn't want anybody to get hurt. Timmy, you gotta disarm the bomb. I don't know how. I bought it through mail order. All I had to do is set the time. <laughs> we'll check the read the. Do you, do you have the instruction booklet? What does it say to do? I'll tell you what it says. No, no, no. Here, give me that. <laughs> oh, God, no. For the love of God. Oh, no. Somebody help. <laughs> you guys. It says for dismantling instructions. Please send twelve dollars and ninety-nine cents and wait four to six weeks for delivery. Oh no. What do we do? What do we do? <laughs> Write me out a will. Give me a pen! Somebody give me a pen! <laughs> says the bomb goes off at the end of the show, right? So, if we rewrite the script and make the show end a minute sooner, the bomb won't go off! <laughs> you guys, get out your scripts. Actually, hold on a second, you guys. I'd just like to thank you all for tuning in tonight. something the show ends with one minute to spare I know it doesn't have anything to do with travel, but I just thought I would throw it in for your enjoyment. Until next time, have a safe trip, and don't forget to call Center Holidays Burnaby to book your next trip or vacation. <laughs>